Welcome back to the channel. Today's video is going to be all about cast iron, whether it's Dutch oven, skillets, you name it, we're going to go over it. We're going to talk about maintenance, reseasoning, old skillets that haven't been used in a very long time. We're going to talk about cleaning them, all kinds of good stuff. First things first, we just made breakfast. I have two pans over there. I'm going to clean them up and I'm going to show you how we do that. Cooked a few different things this morning. In this skillet, this did the moose steaks and this also fried our eggs. And then the bigger skillet back there, which is a 12 inch, that one cooked our English muffins for us. This is about typically how dirty they get. They do get dirtier every once in a while, but this is gonna be a pretty easy clean. This pan right here is still hot. I just took it off the heat. What we cooked with in this one was moose tallow, which is moose fat, and we also used some olive oil. Let's clean this one first. I'm gonna take it over to the sink. Dealing with a hot pan, these little Pot holders are really good to have. This one got a little too close to the flame, so it's a little burnt. But I got two of these. Like I said, this pan is hot. It's gonna take a real simple cleaning. It's gonna need water and a nice stiff brush. And then we're also gonna have to prepare this pan for the next time we wanna cook with it. Okay, that was simple. Very simple to clean a well-seasoned cast iron skillet that you just cook something with oil or fat. We need to dry this off. Cast iron will rust if you don't dry it off and prepare it for the next time you wanna use it. To do that, we usually just take it over to our wood stove. If you don't have a wood stove or a fireplace, we do it sometimes too, just on our regular range. You know, you just fire it up, get it nice and hot, burn off all of the water. Since we just cooked with a lot of oil and fat, there's still a lot of oil and fat in this pan, so we're not gonna add any to it. We're just gonna let this water burn off. This skillet will be ready for the next time we want to use it. Let's go and grab our next pan. So this cast iron skillet is not a great example of an extremely dirty pan, but we're going to treat it like one. I'm going to show you one more trick that we like to use when we're cleaning these. We're going to put it back on the heat. We're going to do about a medium heat and we're going to put, I don't know, maybe a half a cup of water in here. We're going to let it come to a simmer and then we're going to take our stiff brush and we're just going to kind of rub the pan and it'll clean right up. We do not want to use any soap or anything like that at this point. If we were cooking something sweet, maybe meat with like a glaze on it or something like that, and there's some real like sticky stuff in the pan, a little scraper comes in really handy. We use this a lot. And then we have this little kind of cloth, dishcloth type thing. I'm not exactly sure what to call it, but this is more just for real delicate uh, pans that just need a light wiping.
As you can tell, that cleaned up real quick. I'm barely touching this pan. I'm just kind of slowly circling around, and this thing is clean, almost. I'm going to take over the sink and rinse it out just like we did the other one. So this pan is all ready to go. We're going to get it over on the range, and I'll show you how we um, burn all this water off. Since we just cooked our English muffins in this skillet, there wasn't as much oil in the pan, so we are going to oil this up just a little bit, get it ready for next time. Still a little bit of water in there. Let's let this go on medium heat for about two minutes until it's completely burned off, and then we're going to use a little bit of olive oil and a rag. This pan right here, and then the smaller 10-inch that's over on the wood stove, those are our go-to pans. We use them every single day. In fact, we don't even have like a non-stick pan or a stainless steel pan. We just use these two cast iron pans, I'd say 90% of the time. Since we use them so much and we cook with a lot of fats, whether it's lard or moose tallow, and we cook with a lot of oils, usually olive oil, the maintenance on these things is extremely simple. They're very well seasoned, so when we're done with them, usually the food just comes right off when we're cleaning it, and it's a very low maintenance when we go to reseason them. All of our water has burned off. We're gonna add a very, very small amount of olive oil just enough to rub into the pan, about that much. Let it get hot. And this is kind of our dedicated cast iron rag. It hangs up there by the cast iron skillets and is pretty much just soaked in oil. So we use this to kind of rub the oil into our pans and we're just gonna rub it in to the bottom mostly and then you wanna hit the sides a little bit. And we're just gonna basically rub that in till we you can't rub it anymore until it kind of disappears. Put a nice shiny coat on it. I'm gonna get the heat cranked all the way up. And as you can tell, it's starting to smoke. That's what we want. We kind of want to smoke off that oil. We don't just want to leave like a layer of oil in there. We want it to kind of absorb into the pan. So that's what we're gonna do. Let this go for maybe 30 seconds and then it'll be done. There we go. A very hot, but very nicely seasoned cast iron skillet. We're gonna move this over to the countertop and we're gonna go over all of the cast iron gear that we owned. This is all of the cast iron equipment that we own and every piece we have sitting here kind of has its own little story. I'm gonna go over each one of these pans, tell you a little bit about them, what kind they are and how we came upon them. This big cast iron in the back, which I believe is a 12 quart, and this little tiny one right here, I think they're the same manufacturer. They both just say made in the USA and both of them were given to us by a friend and she got them from her grandmother. So I believe they are pretty old. This one's great just for little jobs. And when you got something a little bit bigger, we bust this one out. This one is great for rendering down lard or making moose tallow. These two right here are the ones we found out at our other cabin. This one is a 10 and a quarter inch. I think this one's an eight inch. This is a Griswold. I've done a little bit of research on this one and I believe it is a Birmingham. Not positive on that, but I think that's what we got here. These two are completely dirty. They need to be re-seasoned. We're going to be doing that today. This one is a Lodge and this is a 12 inch. This one I found in the garbage when I used to work for the garbage company back in Oregon. That was an awesome find. It was brand new when I found it. This is also a lodge. This is called a Dutch oven, and I believe this is a five quart Dutch oven. We've had this one for about six years, and this was actually a gift from Ariel's stepdad. And then this one right here, which is probably our go-to skillet. This is a lodge 10 inch skillet. This is the first one we have ever owned, and this was a gift from my mom. All these pans kind of have different purposes for what you're cooking and how much you're cooking. One of the best parts about cooking with cast iron, in our opinion, is the sear you get cooking with these. They produce a really nice, hot, even heat. It's great for cooking meat. We love to cook eggs, vegetables. We do everything with our cast iron skillets. Couple cons about cast iron and cast iron skillets. They are heavy. They take up a lot of space and they do require maintenance. But as long as you're using these pans, Daily, the maintenance is really not gonna to be too bad at all. We only have these ones because we can't really have just a ton of cast iron hanging around. This might seem like a lot. We don't use these all every day. Like I said, we just use our 12 inch and our 10 inch. We mainly have so many because they all have different purposes. Pretty much everything on the counter is in decent shape, except for these two that we found out at the cabin. They're not horrible and all rusted out or anything like that. They did take good care of them, but there is, a ton of old seasoning on these pans and I have a feeling that they are not going to be non-stick. So we're going to work on both of these today. We're going to strip them down to bare metal, completely re-season them, and then we're going to give them the final test at the end, which is frying an egg. You can tell these ones need some work. A good seasoned cast iron skillet is going to be shiny and smooth. These ones are more of like a flat black and they're very dull in color. This one also has a lot of, it looks like 
chunkiness or, or chipping in the pan. And what that is, is that is the old seasoning kind of coming off. And we are going to remove all that today. We're going to strip this pan and this one down to the bare metal. There's lots of different ways to do this. The way we're going to do it, we're going to head over to the wood stove again. The method we're about to use, if you don't have a wood stove, that's okay. You can use a campfire. You can also do it a different way in your oven. You just want some really high heat. We have our wood stove kicked down on low. The thermometer on top is reading about 500 degrees. We've got some nice coals in there. We're basically going to throw these pans in the fire for about a half an hour. We're going to flip them every once in a while, and we're just going to get these pans down to bare metal. They're going to look completely different than they do right now. They're almost going to be like a silver gray color when we're done. we got a big wood stove. I'm going to be able to fit both these pans in there at the same time. I'm just going to stick them right in there on top of the coals. I'm going to leave the handles facing out so I can grab them. We're going to set it and forget it. We'll check them in about 15 minutes. And at that point, we should start to see the old seasoning kind of starting to flake off. And we're probably going to give them a turn in there. It's been about 15 minutes. And I don't know if you can see in there, but the pans are really starting to change color. The portion of the pan that you actually cook on, which is the seasoning on these ones, was probably the thinnest is starting to turn like a gray or a silver. I think I'm gonna flip them in probably about 10 minutes. And these are probably gonna go for about 40 minutes altogether, but we're looking good so far. And I might add another piece of wood to get a little hotter in there. It's been about 20 to 25 minutes. We flipped our skillets. We got the other log in there. This fire is ripping. When you're using an oven mitt to move these things around, you want to be really quick because these things are way hotter than this oven mitt can take. When we pull those out, we're actually going to use a pair of channel locks to get them out of the wood stove. The cast iron skillets are done. They've been in there for about 35 minutes. I'm going to take them out. I'm going to put them on top of the wood stove where it's a little bit cooler. We're going to let them cool down a little bit until we're able to handle them. What we're doing with these pans is pretty extreme. Chances are, if you have a cast iron skillet and you're gonna reseason it, you're not gonna need to do this, but this is kind of like a last resort. We really need to get these things clean. We don't know where they've been, who's used them, and we're gonna make them kind of brand new for us to use. These have cooled for about an hour, and they are now cool enough where I can handle them. And I'm gonna bring them over to the sink and we're gonna scrub them out. With regular maintenance of a cast iron skillet, you do not wanna use soap to clean them. What that is gonna do, it's gonna strip the seasoning that you have on there off and your pan is going to start sticking and it's not going to work the way a cast iron skillet is supposed to work. Right now we are going to use some dish soap. We want to strip this thing of everything. I'm going to put some soap, hot water, and we have this metal scoring pad and we're just going to scrub this thing the best we can. Most of the little flakes of the old seasoning, they just they just come right off. They kind of baked off in the fire. But there's a couple spots in this one where it was pretty thick, so we're just gonna keep scrubbing until we get this thing looking like new. We got this thing nice and clean. There was actually so much old seasoning on this pan, I didn't even see that six on the handle. This is a Griswold number six. I'm just kind of feeling it, and I'm looking for spots where I haven't gotten it off. And there's a little bit here still on the handle. So I'm going to do a little more soap and some elbow grease and we'll get this thing cleaned up. This is bare metal now and we need to get this heated up, burn all this water off there. I'm going to put it on the range, crank it on high, and I'm going to clean that other skillet. The Griswold that we have over here, all the water has evaporated. You can really tell the color difference. This thing is just bare metal now. At this point, these pans are just about ready to be reseasoned. We are going to preheat our oven to 400 degrees, and this is going to take a few hours. So, this is what we're starting with, and this is what we're going for. 
We're gonna get both these pans in the oven. Like I said, I got it set at 400 degrees Fahrenheit, and we're gonna put them in there for about 10 to 15 minutes, get them nice and hot, and then we're gonna pull them out and we're gonna start actually oiling them. As far as seasoning your cast iron, there's different oils you can use. We pretty much just use what we have. We're gonna use olive oil and moose towel today. These seem to be the ones that work the best for us, but if I'm cooking something sweet, like maybe pancakes or something, at that point, I usually use coconut oil. Pans are nice and smoking hot, and we're gonna kinda of alternate our oils. First round, well, let me kinda of explain what we're doing first. We're basically gonna oil them up. We're gonna put them in the oven on 400, like I said. We're gonna smoke off the oil, kinda of like we did earlier on the stove top. This works really well because it gets the whole entire pan kinda of evenly hot. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little oil on the first round, I'm gonna rub it into the pan, inside and out, handle and everything. We're gonna put it in the oven, smoke off the oil. Should take about 15 or 20 minutes. Pull them out, I'm gonna switch over to the lard. We're gonna do this multiple times. It might take you know five or six times depending on how bare of metal you have in your pan, but we're gonna get it good enough to where these pans are not gonna stick anymore. Doing a little more oil, I'm probably doing like a teaspoon in these. At this point, you can use a rag, you can use a towel, you're probably not gonna to wanna to use something that you're gonna keep. So we have these little shop towels we like to use for this. Nice coating of oil on these. Let's get them back in the oven. Been about a half an hour. It's getting real smoky in our little cabin. That means these things are ready to put more oil on. I'm gonna pull them out and we're gonna do a little bit of moose towel on them this round. This is exactly what I'm looking for. Kind of getting the oil to smoke off, burn off. We don't wanna make it look like there's like oil pooled up in there or anything. We kinda wanna see the bottom of the pan. So this looks good. I'm gonna do a little bit of moose towel in them. We've got these hot pans oiled up and we're just gonna keep repeating this process until it's done. We've oiled our pans a total of five times and I'm gonna bring them out. I'm gonna fire them up on the stove on high heat. We're gonna finish them off with oil one more time. Well, I can already tell that these pans are starting to look a lot better than when we stripped them of all their seasoning and pulled them out of the wood stove. As far as the black color goes, that will come in time. We need to start using these pans daily and they're gonna get a real nice seasoning and get that nice dark black shiny color. We're gonna do a little olive oil in them. They're starting to smoke pretty good here. And I switched over to our rag that we like to use. Basically all this is doing is it's kind of baking into this cast iron skillet. It's absorbing into it and it's gonna create our non-stick finish and it's gonna help protect our pans. And we're just gonna smoke this off again. This is part of the reason we do it in the oven because you do it on the stove top the whole process. You're really gonna smoke the house out. I'm gonna let these go a little bit longer. We're gonna let them cool a tiny bit. We're gonna add a little more oil and we're gonna see how we did, see if we could fry egg up in these pans. Just by looking at these pans, we've never used these ones. They're the ones we found out at the old cabin. This one right here, which I believe is the Birmingham, looks like a lower quality um, cast iron skillet. And the Griswold, that one looks really nice. So let's see how they do. Well, both pans seem to be performing about the same, which is, they're actually doing pretty good. Tiny bit of stickage. When you first season these pans like I'm doing today, you're gonna need to keep cooking with them. This happened when we did our old ones and it's gonna happen with these ones. The more you use these skillets, the more non-stick they're gonna get. But I'm very happy with the progress we've made with these ones so far. We're gonna put these eggs aside and we're gonna make some dinner. Cast iron skillets are extremely versatile. Like I said before, we use them for everything. We do desserts. Um, cookies, we cook a lot of bread with them, we cook pizza, we do quiches with a nice crust, very multi-purpose, we do pretty much all of our cooking on these things, and you can cook with them over a campfire, which is awesome. And tonight, we're gonna make some beef stroganoff. We hope you enjoyed the video, and we'll see you guys next time.